Hi, today I would like to show you how to use the JSON API for SPM from within SOAP UI. In SOAP UI, first we need to add a new REST project. The URI that we need to use to, first of all, query the authentication token that we require to run further JSON API calls against SPM is found in the JSON API documentation. To make my life easier, I've copied it here. So as you can see, it uses the host name, the Tomcat port, and then the URI to get to the token services. Once we've added this, we actually need to change the method that we're going to use to retrieve the SSO token to a post, which gives us extra options. And then we need to add a header. The header in this case is with a, the title accept and the value of application JSON. The post that we're going to send, the request, is formed as such credentials. So basically to send in the credentials that we're using, username as the title of the field. And this is the username I'm going to use, admin. Password, again, the title. And the value for this user's password is currently empty. That's why I'm sending an empty string here. So let me copy this across. And then I press the submit request button. If you are still on XML, you are getting a message that this cannot be viewed as XML, which is expected as we are uh, getting a JSON response. So you can see here, this gives us metadata about the SSO token. So when the token was created, when it expires, the type, the encoding, and the actual value of our SSO token. So let me copy this out from here and I'll temporarily paste it in here. So as you can see, this is quite a long string. So it makes sense to actually paste it somewhere where you have line wrapper enabled. What we need to do is, uh, what I just did here is remove the double quotes at the end and at the beginning of the string. So the actual SSO token is without the starting and closing double quotes. This string is what we then require when we now use queries uh, using the JSON API to pass in as an extra header. So for further requests, let me add the header with the name alf SSO auth n token and then the string. So let me add an extra header. And now this long string that we have down here. Make sure you actually take everything, including the equal signs at the end. Um, obviously, that will look different for uh, every time you generate this SSO token. So that goes in here. Okay, now I've written down a few examples to show you what we can do with the JSON API. Obviously, there's um, all the methods that are available through the JSON API are in the JSON API documentation. But here are two simple examples. The first one I would like to show you is how to get an item's details. So if we look at the SBM user interface, I searched for this bug 00173 item earlier in the issue defect management project. As you can see, this item has gone through a set of transitions down here, and it's got a few fields populated. It's currently with a user named Radhika Tester, and it's got this item ID. That's actually how I searched for it. So if you click on actions and copy the URL for this particular item in SPM, you get the following details. So this is actually the same URL, but nevertheless, um, I would just like to explain that. What this shows you is the actual item ID, which is in this case for this item is 109, in which table ID. These two values are important because each SBM item has a unique identifier through these two values. So the table ID defines which project it is in and the record ID is the unique identifier within this table. 
So we need those if we want to query an item. So the JSON API URL to actually use to query details about this item either looks like this. So this is again, this is my host name. Please note the query goes directly against the IIS server. So there is no port 8085 for the Tomcat server required anymore. And then we have the syntax JSON API. In this case, the, the function that we're calling get item, the table ID, which is 1000 and the item ID, which again is 109. So if we now change in our SOAP UI, the actual URL that we're calling, just remove this as well, and not sending the credentials anymore because the credentials, the SSO token is now contained in the header, but we want to actually get all fields. So this, post request that I'm sending here, fixed fields equals false, means that I want to retrieve all fields for this particular item, regardless if they are populated or not. It's not a narrowed out field list. So we basically can see all the fields that are available for this item. So let me paste this in here. And if I execute this, sorry, I did not remove this. Then we get the full details about this item. So as you saw earlier, item ID, the internal item ID, the URL that we're calling here, and so on, the table it's in. And here, the first section here is called field metadata. What this is, is basically, it gives us an information of all the fields available on this item and what they could potentially contain. So it's really the metadata. If we want to see the actual data that is held on this particular item, we need to scroll down. Here, you can see the section then starts with fields and then we get the actual names. So the title with a value of image builder crashes my system, the description, steps to reproduce is currently blank. This is not set. There is a percentage field that has been set and so on. As you can see, a found inversion, for example, is 4.5. Let me just see. I think that was visible on the field as well. Yeah, found inversion here is 4.5. So you see, with this function, you can easily retrieve all the data about an item as it currently stands. So the next thing I wanted to show you is how it is possible to submit an item into a project as well. So this is now a different URL. What we need here is the submit to project function in the JSON API. The submit to project function uses two values afterwards to identify where we want to submit into. The first part of this is the table name in this case, UBG underscore issues. And the second part is IDM underscore project. Let me show you the best way to identify this through SBM Application Administrator. If you log on to SBM Application Administrator and then click on projects and then find the project that you want to submit into. So in this case, we're looking at IDM project and then click on details. You will see the internal name of this project here. You can see it consists of the table name, UVG underscore issues, and the internal project name for this particular project. So as you can see, this string goes into the URL that I need to call to submit an item. So let me copy this across to my SOAP UI and paste this. So we want to use the JSON API into submit to project, use submit to project into UBG issues IDM project. So let me remove this. Again, we need the accept header with a type of application slash JSON and the ALF SSO auth n token that we captured earlier. So the authentication is gone through. And now a little explanation of the actual payload that we're submitting here. So you will find an example of this in the JSON API document as well. But I used basically fields from the get item details response earlier and modified the values that I want to submit. So as you can see, the, the structure is quite simple. You actually specify the field name that you want to submit into. So title is obviously a compulsory field. 
then the string, and then you build up a comma separated list of all the field names, string combinations that you actually want to submit. For integer fields, obviously here, in, for example, the percentage, it's not a string that you're passing in, it's an integer. And for multi-selection fields, it's a bit more tricky. You really would have to look in the back end to see what the values are that you can submit into, but that would break the, the time frame for this video. Found in version is a string again, and functional area I got out of here. Let me just show you this quickly. I actually copied this from the values here. So functional area for the previous item submitted has the ID 30, which equals a value in the dropdown field of user interface. Yeah. So let me copy this as my payload across. and paste in here. So that's a bit too small. Just show you that. So if I now click on submit request, it creates a new item. So with fields, first of all, you have a similar structure here. Um, it basically shows the item ID that has just been created, the URL to that item and so on. But most importantly, you can see at the bottom again, this is the metadata, the, the section at the top. From fields onwards, you can see the values that have been submitted. Yeah. So title was the test submit using JSON API 2 and so on. So let me just go back to the actual user interface and see if this item was generated successfully. So if I now search for And here we are. So as you can see, found in version has been set to 11.3. How found was set to customer and functional area was set to user interface. Thank you.